what is going on kid family and welcome back to the channel thank you for tuning in yet again on today's video guys we're going to be talking about compression numbers compression readings and if you have differences between a dry compression test and a wet compression test what the hell does that even mean so stay tuned and keep watching All right, for those of you that constantly watch the channel, I wanna give you guys a big thumbs up. You guys are MVPs, and there's a lot of you guys that have been commenting on every single video out there, so I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys, it means a lot to me. This channel has grown significantly over the last year. Anyway, for those of you that know, we picked up a abandoned Chevy GM Ecotec motor. I believe it's a 2.2 liter, used in a lot of common GM vehicles like Chevy Cobalt, Chevy Malibus, Saturns, and array of other vehicles there. And we need to double check whether this engine is good or not. I think obviously it's no good because it was just sitting and it was abandoned, but we ran a dry compression test on the vehicle and a wet compression test on the vehicle. Now, if you're here asking yourself what a compression test is, a compression test is pretty much a tool that mechanics use to let them know whether or not the engine is healthy or not. If the engine has problems, a compression test will instantly let you know those problems, okay? And a dry compression test is pretty much as you hear it. You just hook up the tool to the engine on a warm engine and you get your readings. You crank the motor over a few times and you check the pressure in the cylinders. Now, Every engine has a set amount of pressure that it needs to create because that force creates that power that translates into wheel horsepower. There is also something called a wet compression test. And what the wet compression test is, is dropping some oil into the cylinders so the cylinder rings in the pistons can lube up and help create a better seal in the cylinder. Now, if there's differences between your dry compression test and your wet compression test, now that can give you some clues on what might be going on. And we got our numbers right here. I'm gonna populate those numbers right here on the screen. And we're gonna be talking about those numbers because they're completely different from the dry to the wet, way different. And uh, let's talk about this. This was my first compression test that I have done on any kind of vehicle. And here's the problem. Typically, you wanna do a compression test when the engine's in the vehicle and you could turn it no problem with the key, right? If you're buying a used motor that's in the junkyard, you're hoping that the motor has a starter attached to it because you can jump the starter and still crank the starter over which cranks the motor over which you get a nice consistent reading of the compression. Now in our case, you know, ghetto as hell, no starter with the engine. So we used the good old biceps, triceps. We screwed up the pinky by turning that motor over. We had Bullets Garage come and help me turn that motor over. But these are the readings we got. So yes, these are not the best readings, right? But I've seen one other guy on YouTube do it and it is possible because it is still getting compression. It just not might be accurate turning that motor over as a starter wheel, but you're still turning it over. You're still creating pressure and it's the best we can do with what we got. So I'm sticking to it. So let's check it out. Cylinder number one, dry reading. We got 70 PSI. Now 70 PSI is pretty dang low, but on a dry test, this was our best cylinder yet. Cylinder two yielded 30 PSI. Cylinder three, 50 PSI. And again, cylinder four, 30 PSI. So what we can see is cylinder two and three are very consistent and very low and cylinder one and three are a little bit higher. Now, is it a bad head gasket? Is it a bent valve? Is it bad piston rings? Is the, is the timing off? What the hell is going on? I'm not sure yet, but we put some oil into the cylinders just because I wanted to see what a wet compression test will show. And for those of you that don't know, a wet compression test essentially tests the piston rings, right? because if your valves are bad, whether you put oil in the cylinders or not, that air, that compressed air that's supposed to be compressed is gonna leak past your intake or exhaust valves. Intake valves is what the engine uses to breathe in, and exhaust valves is what your engine uses to breathe out. Now, if any of those aren't sealed properly, you won't get proper compression, so, 
if your wet test is higher that means your piston rings are sealing much better and that kind of points to the direction that your piston rings are worn so cylinder number one wet compression test we got 220 psi i was shocked that first crank of compression bullets garage did that needle just shot right up i was even surprised like what but that was an accurate test because once i click the release pressure button on the compression tester it just bled off completely cylinder number two we got 60 psi so we doubled the compression of the dry test cylinder number three was the highest at 250 psi but on this cylinder in the wet compression test i gotta admit once i tried to bleed the system off of the air it had a hard time bleeding so i'm assuming we put a little bit too much oil into those cylinders when we were pouring that oil for the wet compression test and some of that oil squirted probably up into the compression tester yielding a little bit higher results but like i said the first one was accurate at 220 the third one was a little bit higher because of the oil i believe it got in it and it could have messed with the results but let's say one and three would be around 220 to 240 so i think they're within spec and again, cylinder number four, again, we got 60 PSI, which is very consistent with cylinder number two. So cylinder, in summary, cylinder number one and cylinder number three show similar readings, both dry and wet. And cylinder number two and four double in PSI from the dry to the wet. So what does that tell us? For sure, it tells us that the oil that sealed the piston rings much better created a lot more pressure in the engine so typically when you run and do a compression test you want a car that's warm an engine that's in operating temperatures this engine is obviously not in operating temperatures it does not run it is in the it is winter time out here in the midwest so maybe that's why those dry compression readings are so low but even though they're low those numbers are not consistent enough and they're not close to each other so what i'm saying here is if it was a valve issue, whether it was intake or exhaust, and I put oil in the cylinders, it shouldn't have raised any kind of compression. Because if the valves are damaged on the dry test, they're still damaged on the wet test, so air should escape. So what these results are showing me, that is, we got bad piston rings, or just a really cold motor that's not holding compression, especially on cylinder two and three. And for whatever reason, let's say we do have a bent valve, a chipped valve, some kind of problems with the valves. It wouldn't be cylinder two and four that have the low compression because those are opposing cylinders. They don't go up or down at the same time. Because remember, cylinder one and four go up at the same time. One and four, one and four, one and four. And cylinder two and three go up and down at the same time. So for two and four to be way off, kind of throws me off if I understand this correctly. So I'm very curious what you guys have to say, what these results are. I know they're a little bit whack. I know some of you already commented on the previous videos, but if you guys have any advice on what I should be looking at, as far as damage is concerned, comment down below because I'm curious. Also, a lot of you guys recommended we do a leak down test, an engine or cylinder leak down test. Now, I definitely wanted to do it at this point in time, I went and called all the auto zones. They, they don't even know what an engine leak down tester is. So I don't know who works at those auto parts stores, but I don't think they rent that as a tool. And it doesn't justify me buying the tool to use it only one time on an engine that's not even going in a car. Again, I could buy it on eBay, but you can't return it via eBay or there's restocking fees. And Harbor Freight failed me, man. I saw it on the, I saw it on the, online website they were selling it for 30 bucks their return policy is great that's what we were gonna do we went to the store today right before filming this video and i was excited we're gonna do this leak down test but unfortunately they don't have it i don't know why they're advertising it none of the stores in my area carry it so kind of disappointing i think we're gonna have to skip the leak down test on this vehicle it could have shown us a little bit more information because if you don't know a compression test is pretty much the engine naturally creating that compression and then depending on the compression we see if it's low that means there's an issue 
But what a leak down test is, we're actually forcing air from a compressor, forced air into that cylinder, and we're seeing how much air gets bled off compared to what we first force in. You can show 10% leakage, 20% leakage, 30% leakage, and that shows you the health of that cylinder, of that engine. Now, I know a lot of people modify their compression testers and do a leak down test with a compression tester and such, but again, compression tester was rented again from AutoZone as well, so we don't have that anymore. And you know, the motor needs to start being taken apart. So on the next video, guys, we're gonna start tackling, we're gonna unstrap it, we're gonna take off the intake manifold, exhaust manifold, injectors, we're gonna take the valve cover off, check the, the, the valve cover, how's it looking underneath, is there a lot of sludge? Do we see anything obvious? And we'll go from there. But I'm gonna cut this video right here at this point in time. And again, by no means am I a mechanic, by no means have I ever really done a professional engine rebuild or anything of that sort. So I do rely on you guys and I do appreciate your comments and feedback. So thank you and peace out. I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. Though it might be nice to own a jet plane, I'ma do it all for you. Come along and see it's true, but the 